Well, friends, it looks like there's some breaking news regarding the Georgia State RICO case. No plea offer for you, Donald, Rudy, Mark. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, there are a couple of things that I've been saying all along about the prosecution against Donald Trump down in Georgia. One, the Georgia State RICO case against Donald Trump is strong. And two, Donald Trump deserves no plea offer, no reduced charge, no sentencing cap or limitations, no breaks, no concessions, no benefits. Let's have a look at the new reporting by Hugo Lowell in The Guardian. But if you'll indulge me 10 quick seconds here, at the end of today's Justice Matters video, I'm going to include a short piece of original music. It's a piece that was written and performed by a friend of mine named Derek Jones, and it is titled perhaps appropriately for this YouTube channel, Justice Matters. It's a great piece of music, and I hope you'll stay around until the end of today's video and give it a listen. Now, let's turn to the new reporting by Hugo Lowell in The the Guardian. Headline, Georgia prosecutors oppose plea deals for Trump, Meadows, and Giuliani. Okay. That headline warms this old prosecutor's heart. And that article begins, Fulton County prosecutors do not intend to offer plea deals to Donald Trump and at least two high-level co-defendants charged in connection with their efforts to overturn the 2020 election in Georgia, according to two people familiar with the matter, preferring instead to force them to trial. The individuals seen as ineligible for plea offers include Trump, his former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, and Trump's former lawyer Rudy Giuliani. Aside from those three, the Fulton County District Attorney, Fawny Willis, has opened plea talks or has left open the possibility of talks with the remaining co-defendants in the hope that they ultimately decide to become cooperating witnesses against the former president, the people said. The previously unreported decision has not been communicated formally and could still change, for instance, if prosecutors shift strategy, but it signals who prosecutors consider their main targets and how they want to wield the power of Georgia's racketeering statute to their advantage. Trump and 18 co-defendants in August originally pleaded not guilty to a sprawling indictment that charged them with violating the RICO statute in seeking to reverse his 2020 election defeat in the state, including by advancing fake Trump electors and breaching voting machines. In the weeks that followed, prosecutors reached plea deals in quick succession with the former Trump lawyers Sidney Powell Jenna Ellis and Kenneth Chesbro, who all gave proffer statements that were damaging to Trump to some degree, as well as the local bail bondsman, Scott Hall. The plea deals underscore the strategy that Willis has refined over successive RICO prosecutions, extending offers to lower level defendants in which they plead guilty to key crimes and incriminate higher level defendants in the conspiracy pyramid. Because friends, I can tell you, having handled conspiracy cases, having prosecuted RICO cases, that is precisely how it's done. And just in case you're asking yourself, well, only four co-defendants, only four of Donald Trump's criminal associates have decided to plead guilty, have flipped, and are cooperating against Trump and the remaining co-defendants, only four. Might there be more? 
Well, this nugget is buried a little further down in the Guardian article. The prosecutors on the Trump case appear convinced that they are close to gaining more cooperating witnesses. In recent weeks, one of the people said prosecutors privately advised the judge to delay setting a trial date because some co-defendants may soon plead out, one of the people said. And yes, friends, that also warms this old prosecutor's heart, the prospect of more of Donald Trump's criminal associates, his co-conspirators, agreeing to plead guilty, cooperating with the prosecutors, flipping on Donald Trump, and agreeing to testify truthfully against Trump and all of the remaining co-defendants, co-conspirators. Of course, we've sort of been expecting that all along. So now, let's talk about a few of the main takeaways from this new no plea offer for you reporting. First of all, it looks like it's becoming clear that the kingpin, the mob boss, will be forced to go to trial. Together with his underboss, Mark Meadows, and his consigliere, Rudy Giuliani. Second, District Attorney Willis knows her case is strong. I mean, the crown jewel of incriminating evidence in this case is on a recorded telephone call. The mob boss, Donald Trump, telling the Georgia Secretary of State, just find me 11,780 votes and corruptly declare me the winner of the election in Georgia. I mean, friends, that's like when I was trying cases with wiretap evidence. And you could hear the defendant's own voice on an audio recording when he didn't know he was being recorded. The defendant is sitting across the courtroom from the jury and the jury hears the defendant talking about the crimes he was planning to commit or narrating what he did when he committed those crimes in his own voice. That's what I call a just press play trial. So yes, District Attorney Willis knows that her case is strong. Now this will come as no surprise, but when prosecutors assess a case and contemplate extending a particular plea offer to the defendant, you know, one of the things we do is we try to figure out how strong the case is, right? Because the strength of the case, the quality of the evidence impacts the kind of plea offer we might choose to extend to a particular defendant. So, you know, the less certain we are of the prospect of, of a conviction, you can never be sure, but after a while handling lots of criminal cases, you have a pretty good sense of what your odds are of winning a conviction based on the evidence you have. And the less certain a conviction is, um, the more likely that you will give a somewhat more generous plea offer. So for example, a defendant who is indicted for first degree premeditated murder, he might end up receiving a plea offer to a second degree murder charge. Or somebody indicted for second degree murder might be extended a manslaughter plea offer because you can't ignore the strength and the quality of the evidence and the odds of a conviction. But friends, maybe the most important takeaway of all is this. If you're a high government official, including President of the United States, and you try to steal an election from the American people, there will be no plea offer for you, but there will be prison. You know, I've heard some people express the following concern. Well, what would happen if Donald Trump were allowed to negotiate a deal that enabled him to avoid prison time if he promised never to run for high public office again? Well, that would basically be giving tomorrow's aspiring dictator free reign, the green light, to follow Donald Trump's playbook to try to steal the presidency, to try to install 
himself in power unlawfully and unconstitutionally. And if he fails, just like Donald Trump failed, well, he will fail secure in the knowledge that he too can simply negotiate his way out of a prison term, just agree not to run for office again. And that is no kind of justice. And justice matters. Now friends, don't go anywhere. So friends, here's a short clip of an original composition by singer-songwriter Derek Jones. I'll put links to Derek's website and some of his music in the description of this video. So please have a listen to Justice Matters by Derek Jones. We can't just walk away From the wrongs we see today All the games that people play Justice matters Justice matters. Justice matters. Justice matters.